Before we start this video, I just want to let you know that we forgot to turn this camera on while we were doing this interview, but we have that camera on over in the corner. This is the best interview you're ever going to see. We only have one angle. It's going to be a lot easier for me to edit, but still, I wish we had another angle. Uh, it's been a very stressful week, and we'll talk about that in the future, but enjoy the rest of this video. I'm telling you, it's worth it. Just watch the video. You're going to hear everything about this guy right here, and it's amazing, all right? We'll see you in a second. Enjoy the rest of the video. So. I do want to say one thing. I do want to start it. You do want to start it? Yeah. Okay, we want to... All right. I just want to make sure everybody understands that the angle that the camera is on with me adds 50 pounds. With these guys, it subtracts 50 pounds. <laughs> so just so we understand it right from the get-go. All right, we got that one sorted yeah. out. Okay. So just know, 50 pounds less. <laughs> what was that X Games where you did the flip the whip over the giant box jump and the ski slope thing? That never happened, actually. Flip whip over the... It was a double tail up okay. over the ski slope. What, which one was that? That was X Games 2006. It's the first time I heard that joke, and it's been pl replayed every <laughs> Really? Day, as I have a picture-perfect memory of being on the top deck. All right. And they did a quick interview yeah. with Dad. And he did said, they really? He said, make sure the camera does that. The camera was it always 50? I just no, gotta I think it was 30 pounds. Okay, yeah, it's, it's 50 now. Yeah, camera Cameras technology, yeah. 4K. You just gotta that. remind people, you know. Yeah. That's no, all. Well, the truth is, you're what? You're gonna be 60 years old soon. Yeah. I mean, you've had a very long life. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> you have. Just think about that. Not quite I've had as long a really, as your mother. Though. I've had a. Re she's had an even longer life. <laughs> yeah. Which is, which is unbelievable. I, I've had a long life at 36. Yeah. It, it felt like an eternity. Here you are at getting close to 60 years yeah. old like what does it feel to be alive for that long and like get to see all that you've accomplished o hmm. over the years it's um it's good actually it's good is but, it uh, is it hard to go back and relive all the memories individually no no it's is good that to easy? go back that's great having memories is the best yeah and that's why i tell you guys all the time you know make sure you go out and you do this if you say you know you think about you want to do something or Make sure it's going to be a memory. So yeah. you definitely got to do it. Okay. You know, even if you don't want to do it, you got to do it. Yeah. So like, just thinking back to like, even when I was born, the whole entire life that you watched me live. Yeah. Maddie live. It, he, that was ten years after that, mm -hmm. which is which is insane. Yeah. Like, when you look back at those, does it feel like an eternity? Eternity no, ago? No, really like, does doesn't. It, feel it, short? it feels like yeah, it was quick. Wow. Short. It was just like yesterday. Wow. We we're out there riding uh, bikes with you guys. Well, let's start with that. I mean, yeah. that's the biggest reason why we were doing this whole interview is because I want everybody to understand the journey that you had in BMX. Yeah. Because it's way different, you know, than I had, even though we were there side by side the whole time. Because I was the one that fell in love with the sport. I was yeah. the one that wanted to ride my BMX bike. I'm the one that became obsessed with riding my BMX bike. And I'm the one that, you know, ended up accomplishing all I did, but I wouldn't have been able to do any of it if it wasn't for you. That's and true. that first day when I said I wanted to start BMX. Right, so racing. We're gonna start with that. Yeah. You know, um, April. Dad has never been a BMX yes. rider. No, never no, no, no. Never once been a BMX no. never once been a BMX yeah. That's Bro, true. That, zero interest in BMX Yeah, riding. exactly. That's a good point. Many people ask that a lot. And, I've heard that a lot. You would think that our That's life, point. the way it was completely involved with action sports, BMX, start, start bicycles, yeah. Yeah. you would think that you guys would have forced it on us when like, hey, you have to do it. Armstrong. No. He, was like, he, was, he was like Lance Armstrong, Matt Hoffman, <laughs> it was just all together. But no, he, he, like, come clean. Tell him that you can't even ride a bike. Well, I can't ride a bike. <laughs> I'm just I got an electric bike. He's he's awesome. got electric. We, went out, we went on a bike ride this morning. We did 6.7 right. miles That's this morning, right. so, which was awesome. But you, you don't have any, if, if it wasn't for us riding bikes, like, you, you yeah, wouldn't have been I riding at all. You would probably be. wouldn't even own a bike. No. True. And you guys would be doing heating and cooling. <laughs> you know? True. Don't be a mess. Still might do heating. <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. It all depends on how this YouTube journey <laughs> goes. But yeah, he had zero. He had nothing to do with yeah, BMX. So no. the fact that like our lives turned into what it is, like literally all of our lives kind of still revolve around bikes. I mean, me and Matt yeah, sure. do absolutely, Mine but like too. yours as well. Yeah. You guys still have the bike shop. Yeah, sure. So. Going back to April 1995, I'm the one that started it, where I wanted to race BMX. Yeah. You yeah, said, no problem, let's do it. You yeah. brought me to the BMX track, we did that race, I crashed my first race, my, um, my handlebars pulled my pants down, I laid down on the ground, stuck in a pretzel yeah. with my underwear hanging out, it, it was embarrassing, but I still went back the and next week. That was week. at the track behind our bike shop. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Which was actually down the street from where we lived at the time. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
Because I started riding because there was a kid that lived yeah. outside my neighborhood that Wally. was, he, he was the man, the coolest dude in the world, coolest haircut, just had, um, just, just the, the coolest person, I, yeah. I can't even describe to you, like he was the best BMX rider ever, like he was so stylish, he had the nicest bike, he had the dirt bikes, he had the track in his backyard, he had a pool with a, with a, a slide that went and into And not only it. that, I went to school with his mom. Insane yeah, as well. That is crazy. absolutely insane. But and then he had his cousin Dan. Yeah, exactly. Ride, That's the yeah, one that yeah. took me out That's on right. that on that <laughs> when the, my yeah. pulled my pants Dan. down. But yeah, the Dan was cool. We like yeah, Dan. They're all great. Um, so yes, because of that family, that got me into yeah. BMX. But you know, when it transitioned to me falling in love with it, and then you falling in love with it at the same time, yeah. because for you, you know, it's like you were learning as we went. Yeah, like of what I, I what just cool enjoyed going there to watch you. Yeah, you know, you were enjoying yourself, and of course, that's yeah. what parents want. Of which would make complete yeah. sense but then like you know he, it was like okay he loved the sport i remember i will never forget when you guys you took my bike out of the shed right. and you guys acted like it was stolen i was brokenhearted because they always yelled at me for locking the shed i didn't lock the shed i go back there my bike my prized possession my bmx bike that i was obsessed with which was a mongoose menace at the yeah. time they took my bike out and they told me it was stolen and i should have locked the shed and then later that night he came home with my first like souped up mini it was a power light remember that purple power, power light sure. that thing was beautiful like he went and was hanging at the shop got that thing done made sure it was done that day which is not something that they usually yeah. do at bike shop we don't really do it at the bike shop so he made sure it was done that day got it back to me and i was the happiest kid in the planet earth but you put that effort in, yeah, you know, right away. You Got were like, it. okay, he, he, he needs to get a, uh, a smaller bike that's going to be better for him if racing. I'm going to watch I mean, you do it. I'm going to make sure you have the right equipment. I, you know, no safety first, that. of course. No that denying still that. Stands. Yeah, yeah, still, still of course. Stands still. Yeah. That didn't change Anything at all, did it? Anything that we do, yeah, I'm we like will that. have the best. <laughs> that 100% is the I'm truth. like that. Yeah, I guess, I guess that makes sense. So then you went and got it from the bike shop. It yep. was called Bicycle World. Yep. Um, I used to hang out there a little bit. Yeah, you used to hang out yeah. there a, a bunch. Yeah. So why don't, you, why don't you explain why you ended up hanging, hanging out there? Well, because it just pretty much is the entry to yeah. you being the track director That's there. That's so, true. So how did the track So while we were racing, we used to go in the bike shop a lot. And Bob and Carol and everybody in the shop were very nice people. So I used to hang out in there and I really enjoyed talking with them. And then I actually, uh, people would start coming in and they were so busy. Nobody could help them, so I said, hey, I'll learn a little bit about it, and I would help the people. <laughs> Go to buy a bike? No problem. Let's go. <laughs> so I didn't work there or nothing, but just helped out, and I got to know them pretty good. And uh, we were in the back one day, and Doug was a track director. Doug Schoner, nice mm -hmm. guy. And his kid, uh, his son Chris, yep. he's an awesome racer. Yeah, he's fast. But Doug got frustrated one day, and he said, that's it. I, I've had it. Yeah, and maybe it was something to do with one of the other riders' parents or something. You know, a lot of them were pretty aggressive. So Doug said, that's it. He threw his keys and that was it. Everybody's looking and says, oh man, we don't have a track director. Okay, picked up the keys and now I was track director. Yeah, that happened really fast. Really I quick. remember as a Couple kid months. being so proud. I was like, are you kidding me? I, I, all I wanted to do was be accepted into this BMX lifestyle and then Right away, I was like, I automatically got accepted because I became like the prince of the like, of yeah, the track, track. You know what I mean? Like nobody could Pretty like, much. like yeah. nobody could say anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was like, oh, I was so ha I was the proudest kid in the world for that. Yeah. So let's talk about the fact that you were pretty much like the best track director of all time. Why don't I, you know, I I'll like say to think it, that, I'll although say I, I, you know, I know I there's plenty that. of track directors out there, but when it comes to the CJ BMX, yeah. what you were able to accomplish I enjoyed and it. get done there was unbelievable while working a full-time job. Yeah. What was your job cool, at the time? A heating cooling company. I had my own business. Kramer and Sons Heating Cooling. I, I, at the time, yeah. I will, neither of me or my brother were working for him, so no. I don't know where the Sons thing came yeah. in there. I wasn't born yet. Yeah, Maddie didn't even I exist. I could have taken it over maybe eventually, but no. <laughs> yeah, well, I had to get in the bike ride. And on first. top of that, we had a daughter. Yeah, so that's it was true. Kramer, Sons, and daughter. That is Kramer true. And daughter. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you were working full time. You yeah. end up doing this track director thing, which you were there every day. I did. I like it's it. not like you were like showing up when you had to. Yeah, you I was, were overtime. Like was definitely obsessive. Over you were. You. But yeah. it's not like you did the minimum. Oh, he has to show up on right. practice day, make no. sure the track's operating. No, you were like showing up every day, making sure the track looked the best, making sure the track was in the best condition, well, trying to figure out. What was really cool about that is that there was a tractor there that Bob and Carol owned, and they had it next door at their house with a bucket on it, a loader. 
And uh, yeah, I definitely so you pretty much that. used this oh, opportunity yeah. to ride the tractor. Man, I had my own tractor with a loader, and I, so I just built. <laughs> I just built, and rebuilt, and kept building. <laughs> you really did though. Yeah, it was nonstop. Oh, yeah. And this track, just like the amount of people that were racing BMX at this time, was insane. Like there was. Yeah, it was oh, always. Like, I'm trying to remember sure. what the moto. Yeah, would locals be. were like 25 motos. I would say. Dude, at the very yeah. least, it had to have been right. Like yeah. at the at the yeah. lowest because yeah, I great. remember going there and it was just jam-packed there was just so but many but that track there. from back in the day was a huge yeah it was always a big time uh, track yeah it, it was like, uh it was part of the uh what did it start off as it was NBL ABA there was one before that it was actually sanctioned it might have been that. NBA national by yeah it could have been it was NBA because I remember Bicycle thinking like oh yeah that's really? that's the yeah. basketball yeah thing. so I'm, i think yeah. it's nba then it switched if to you the guys NBL. know in the comments you guys can put it below it was really cool was that it used to race according to carol it raced nbl on saturday and aba on sunday whoa, back in the day sanctioned. dual sanctioned track whoa that's because it's private owned they uh they were kind of allowed to do that that's crazy. yeah it was really cool that. yeah but also kind of why split it up <laughs> I don't well, know. A lot of people, a lot of people only wanted to race NBA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can do both for each. Yeah. So some maybe. people only wanted to race NBA, and some people only wanted to race Because I never raced an ABA race. Yeah. No. Like I, I think I raced yeah. it once. We went as to I one. Got I, know. I remember going. To we one. went to one, but I don't think we raced. It. I think we were just there to watch. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was really because cool I remember about seeing that. the gate and the yeah. way it operated. I was like, holy cow! So weird. And they, they instead of being like, okay, riders, set them up. Riders, ready. You watch the gate. You know, that's what the NBA one was. The 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 ABA one was sounded like a bootleg version of it it was just like oh, really? yeah. yeah it's like and it had this magnet and the guys would have to lift the gate up by hand and a magnet would hold it so when the cadence went the uh the magnet would just let the gate drop i don't even remember what track it was yeah. 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 it was in pennsylvania it wasn't was it? too far yeah. yeah i don't i don't even remember I mean, that's it that's how they did so it back long, in the day though. yeah it was cool back in the 90s yeah so like i said that was 90 it could have been like a 95 90, at the end yeah, of 95 when you took possibly. over beginning oh, it was 95 yeah 95 is when i took over okay so like, yeah. but it didn't stop there. Like you were like, hey, yeah. we're, we're going to uh, Columbus, Ohio for, oh, sure. the, for the Christmas, Christmas Classic. classic. We jumped best. in your truck, the best. we drove on out there, yeah. we went racing in Ohio yep. at the indoor thing. Yep. That was awesome. Like, you, they it, had the dirt jumps out there, they had the dirt Like It's not like going. I was like, hey dad, yeah. bring me to the Christmas Classic. No. You were like, hey, we're going to Christmas Classic. Yeah, we packed Maddie. Well, well Maddie well, wasn't around when yet. When he was around, yeah. he was. We packed everybody up and went for Cause I Day remember, Christmas, I remember like yeah. my mom being pregnant and yeah. bringing her yeah. out to the races, and then Maddie was born. Um, so I guess fun. we'll fast forward the tiniest little bit. 1996, I was nine years old. Now I loved riding my bike in general. I I didn't care if it was racing. I didn't care if we were back over at Reefers Ridge, mm. which I didn't know what it meant at the time. I would tell my parents, "We're going to Reefers Ridge." I, I had no idea what that meant, mm. and they were like, "Where?" And uh, then they came and figured it out. Uh, the trailer park across the street, all the local BMX kids built dirt jumps, and they called it Reefers Ridge. I don't remember as a kid seeing anybody no. experience, you know, the, the, the first word of, of, of the name of the place there. But I don't know. I just remember dirt, dirt jumps happening. And I absolutely loved jumping my bike. Just wanted to jump everything I could. So then I don't even know how you became friends with Jeff. Maybe it's because he was doing the show at the Jeff track. Jeff Jones. Was it because no. he was doing the show at so the track? So what happened was Jeff had come into the bike shop when I was hanging out there one day, introduced himself, we were talking, and he said he had a show, and he was looking for people that could help out in the show. And I said, hey, Scotty's pretty good at jumping. He's young, but he's pretty good at jumping. Said, yeah, all right, let's try him out. Cool. So that's, that's how it. that happened. Yeah, that's how Hollow Wheels happened. I don't yeah. even remember my first time jumping yeah. that ramp. I sure. really, I really cool. don't, but we, we, sh we were riding it, and then like he would let us do right. me do the shows with him. Yeah, so sure. I would I, I went from just you know jumping around in the backyard to like jumping with a jersey on we did right. a lot of fun stuff MTV, we, yeah, yeah the MTV, yeah, so MTV, MTV, on the boardwalk. Yeah, MTV took over like the Jersey Shore boardwalk yeah. like they were doing it, like every summer for a little yeah, bit yeah yeah the summer house yeah, yeah the summer sure. house thing and then uh, they did a show called say what karaoke no it was just say what at the time Say What Karaoke was when they had the people sing. This one was just called Say What, where they would have all the music videos, but they would put the lyrics at the bottom of it as it would play. And Dave Holmes was the host of that one. We ended up going on the boardwalk right. and doing the Say Set What, the the say what the thing. Like, uh, yeah. So we would like, while he was like doing, all right, the next one's gonna be by Britney Spears, we would be jumping in the background. Yeah. Then a lot That's of right. people don't, don't know this, but 
when I was a kid, nine years old, you were like, hey, we're going to Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. You're going to go do a show halftime for show. yeah halftime yeah. show for the uh, Chicago Bulls yeah. and the Atlanta Hawks. All right, it was a huge game. It was Michael Jordan's last season as yeah. the Chicago Bull. If you guys have seen last the Last Dance, Dennis I think it's Rodman episode was there. six or seven. Yeah. You can see they're going to show the, the Georgia Dome. They made a whole like, section of this in the last dance. You can see yeah. the Georgia Dome, and there's a shot of the blue ramp that yeah. is off to the side. Yeah. Like, we were supposed to do a halftime show, but I think it was such mayhem, we couldn't do the halftime show because there's so many people there. It was just mayhem. They were like, yeah, we, we can't do the halftime show. Oh, really? So we ended up doing the show on the other side yeah. of the curtain, and I, we did some jumps outside. Um, so we never I got remember to the players it. on the yeah, way we, out were actually, we were, hey, you guys were awesome. Dennis I got Rodman. to see Dennis Rodman like, yeah, walk past Dennis me and stuff. I, I got to see Michael Jordan play in that yep. game. Like, it was the coolest experience. Yeah, that was, that was really so awesome. So we did a few of those, like of doing like halftime yeah. shows. I remember doing like for Steelers. Yep, we did the Steelers halftime. We did, um, we did the Hornets. I remember doing yeah. that one. And it was awesome. So much fun. So that kind of transitioned yeah. into the next portion because I was obsessed with free, with freestyle. Right. Absolutely obsessed with freestyle. I just watched props, got all the magazines, knew every single rider. And all I wanted to do was like be a part of that. And it's, it's a tough thing to get into because like you have to learn of where to go find it. BMX track, you know, oh yeah, they race, so you show up there. But then when it came to freestyle, like it was like you had to kind of figure out how to be a part of that. I just yeah. wanted to go to a skate park. I've never been to a skate park in my life. So you brought me to the Tom's River Skate Park, yes, which was a cool skate park. Barely okay. new, and it just it opened. Was, it was a cool skate yeah. park. And there was no other skate park in New Jersey. The guys were great that ran it. Uh, yeah. But then, kind of grimy. Though. I didn't like that the uh, there were so many kids in there. It was kind of dark. The birds were flying around and pooping, yeah. I guess, you know, no, all over the mean. ramps. So the kids are riding on ramps, falling on ramps. I remember like seeing something I shouldn't have as a kid. Like remember like seeing like this kid's doing like really grimy things there. Oh. And like oh. he was like, he was, he just didn't want to bring me there anymore. That was it. I just thought we could do better. And when you say we, you literally meant you. Like you, well, you, you. I could so do better. I guess pretty much tell us how the whole skate park thing came into yeah. play. And I just saw that there was just a need for a, for a little bit of a, yeah. Nicer place, I guess. Uh, and like, yeah. The biggest thing when it comes to the need, it's like, yeah, you can always see a need, yeah. but then when you decided to make the change, like oh, you yeah. were literally People the one crazy. that made the change. So let's talk about that. Yeah. Like, I mean, the situation at the time, like, yeah. I, it's. I always, I try to explain to people how impossible it was that you made the skate park. Right. And it's so hard to like even put into words, like. Yeah. Like, how much can you tell us about how this process, from start to finish, of like, so, when you went to go find your first yeah. building, like, how, how did that come into so play? So I had it in my head that I wanted to find a building. Buildings are very, New Jersey is very expensive. Buildings are very expensive in New Jersey. So I, was, uh, I had my own heating cooling company. I was working on an air conditioner in this complex, and next door was this metal building, and it was no cars there. It was all empty. But that's the original skate park. That's their, that, this is Incline Club. The Incline Club, my But place. it even started before that. What? Remember when we went? We went to that 7-Eleven. Oh yeah! Place? Oh like, yeah! Yeah! We went, seven Up. Yeah, yeah, Seven, yeah, seven up. up. It was. Yeah, on uh, on I ninety five. Yep. Yeah, it was a huge building out we there. We went there. there. We went to. Yeah, sure. Oh, no, I looked at a bunch of buildings. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, but it was expensive. You need a lot of money. Uh, yeah, you needed variances. It was pretty that much was impossible. A, right? Oh yeah, like, well, like, it wasn't impossible. Like when you went to se the Seven for Up. For me, it was. Well, yeah, when you went to the Seven yeah. Up place, like after that, ha what kept you still looking at that point, or were you even looking when you found the Incline Club building? Well, it's, it's just the way I am. Uh -huh. I don't like to give up that easy, but yeah, yeah, I got lucky when because uh, I was fixing the air conditioner and I'm just talking to the lady, the homeowner. I said, "Yeah, I've been looking for a building, man. That'd be great." Said, oh, I know the owner. He actually has a condo in here. His name's John. And I think he wants to do something with that building. There's no for sale sign on it or nothing. I didn't know. She said, here, here's his personal cell number. You know, give him a call. I'm all right. So I gave him a call. I was like, John, you know, I've been looking for a building. And he says, yeah, I don't know what I want to do with the building. He says, there's nothing. It used to be tennis on one side, where the Incline Club was, and gymnastics on the other side. And uh, the building had caught fires, electrical fires. They had an electrician working on the electrical, big electric in the back of the building. In the center, and uh, the, something happened with a water pipe. I think a water pipe had broke off a water heater, sprayed on all the electrical while everybody's in there playing tennis and gymnastics and everything, and all the lights started flickering, uh, smoke in the back, and, the, and he, you know, of course, he got nervous. He called an electric, uh, electrical company in. The guy came in, he's working on it, and I, the guy did something wrong. I don't know what happened. The screwdriver, everything was wet. He's working on something, and he grounded or shorted. 
and the transformer, he said, lit up like a Roman candle. Wow. So all this giant electrical, about like 480, this is big, big stuff. It was just shooting through the ceiling, uh, the roof of the building. Um, you know, of course, everybody had to evacuate, the fire department's there. Uh, everything started catching fire in the building. You know, there's no more roof because it burned right through the roof. So I guess he had some kind of a lawsuit going. And he told me, he says, listen, I got a lawsuit going. Uh, I don't know what I really want to do. What do you want to do? He says, I really like to sell it. I said, yeesh, got to want a lot of money for this thing, you know? He told me, yeah, I think I would sell it for this much, you know, because we were casually talking. And like, wow, that's a lot of money for me, but it, yeah, it was like half now. a million dollars, I guess. So I'm thinking, you know, well, how, how, what am I going to do here? You know, I got to find somebody that has money. So I called this guy, a contractor I was doing a lot of work for. I was like, Marty, you know, I got this building here. It uh, had a fire in it. It's huge. It's on you know, five acres, I think it was on. And the guy, yeah, I think he only wants like 500 grand. He's like, really? Boom. He was there in 10 minutes. So he looked, he met with John, looked it all over. He says, uh, tell you what, I want for, uh, how about if I give you 500 grand? <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, done. Shook hands and that was it. Marty now owns the building. He's like, all right, Scott, what do you want? You know, you hooked me up with it. What do you want for, uh, for, for hooking me up with this? I said, I want the spot. You know, I've been looking for a spot for a skate park. I need this spot. Okay, done. You got the spot. And what happened that, was... So that all happened relatively quick. Yeah, it did happen quick. But the guy that he bought the building from, and he's a really nice guy, John, ended up leasing it back. So Marty bought the building. He now owns it. But then he signed a lease with John. Oh. Yes. So now I had to lease it from John. It wasn't my buddy Marty anymore. My buddy Marty owns a building. That's weird. And and John and he told John, look, Scott's getting the side. You know, you're gonna lease it. Yeah, I get it, but you gotta work it out with Scott. Yeah, so I had to now lease it from John. Which was okay. John was very fair with me. So he gave me a pretty decent lease. Went to talk to your mother about it and everybody. Everybody thought I was crazy. What, what are you talking about? You can't, you know, this is a big building. This is a 25,000 square foot building. Big. There's no way you can do this. All right, so now we got the lease. You know, everything's set. We're ready to go. Now we need ramps. We need insurance, you know. Lighting, all the lighting had burned out of the building. So I had to put lighting, but it cost me like, <clears throat> you know, luckily I could do a lot of stuff myself. Right off the bat, I think it was 14000 for the lighting. Just the lighting. Like, oh, great. Now i got to buy ramps. Mm -hmm. So I had a contractor that owed me money. And I says, listen, you owe me money. Yeah, well, yeah, I'll tell you what. How about if you help me with some material? I need some wood. I need some plywood. I need this, this. All right, yeah, I could do that. So I gave him a list of what I wanted. It all started coming. Big truckloads of stuff started coming in. My friends started coming over. I'd ask them, you know, can you give me a hand building? <clears throat> so that was it. A lot of my friends would come over and help me build. It was cool. We had all these lifts there, and it used to be a tennis club. So the whole ceiling was filled with tennis balls, all the rafters. We just, tennis ball fights constantly. It was just, it was a great experience. And then I need more money to do other things, insurance, a deposit. I needed a big deposit on the building. So I worked a deal with the guy because the ceiling was burned. He had bought this uh, white paper, and um, I had to rent lifts. He says, I'll tell you what, I'll buy the material. I'll rent you the lifts, you do the labor to install this paper, the entire building, and then it's 50,000 square foot because of the other half too. That'll be your deposit. <sighs> okay. So it took a couple months there for all of us, me and my friends again on lifts, putting this white material up on the ceiling. Made it look really nice. And then once that was done, I could put the lighting up. There was a 14,000 of lighting went in. Now we can start putting the ramps in because I had all this material stored in there now. So we started building the ramp, so we got it just enough to open uh, right around your birthday. Yeah, yeah. the first day that opened was January 28th or 29th. Was it that late? 2000. Yeah, it could be. 2000, yes. Yeah, because wow. my birthday was the 11th. Yeah. And then we had my birthday party the night before. Your birthday I party was, was the, the opening. Seventh. Yeah, the opening yeah. Uh, event. And everybody showed up there. How many people showed up? <clears throat> well, a good amount of people. What did the first day look like there? Oh, the first day? Yeah. Well, that was kind of a... That was a weird one. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking about it recently. I was yeah. like, dude, you had no way to even, like, advertise. No. It's not like there was social like, media where you could be like... Uh, yeah, and then there was a lot of buzz going around. Hey, there's a new skate park yeah. going. He's like, get out of here. There's no new skate. We got Tom's River Skate Park. There's no new skate park opening. Yeah. So people kind of just start showing up. Like, the first yeah. day we opened... I and we didn't have 100%. The skate park was probably oh, yeah. only 50% when Maybe we Maybe even less yeah. than 50%. Yeah, we had a big mini ramp, and I mm -hmm. guess the box jump section might have been... Yep. And then that was it. We just had barriers up on a giant open area. Yeah, which yeah. was so wild. Like, there's so many things I'm like trying to like bring up because like, 
when he was doing the work I was a kid. Yeah. I had no idea what the heck was happening. I know that my dad just said, hey, we're building a skate park here. And I was like, are you kidding me? And I would show up there and I was 12 years old at the time. I would hang out there pretty much every day. And like he said, it used to be a gymnastics place. Yeah. So I would like sneak over there and go yeah, play on these gymnastics cool. stuff. Oh, yeah. I spent so much time there in the, it was completely smoked out, like dust yeah. everywhere. I was yeah. having the time of my life jumping They'd in these it things. All. It was great. They were good people too. The people that uh, leased the gymnastics part of it. And then I had the other part of it, and we all worked together. It was really, really good. It was unreal. It was a but, nice setup in the beginning. But, like, thinking about it, like, you were just saying, like, oh, you had your friends come. Like, there, seriously, yeah, sure. there was so many people that came yeah. to help yeah. make the skate park. Yeah, thing. you're right. It was, like, I look back at it now. Yeah. I couldn't appreciate it at 12. No. But now, like, realizing, like, there was so many people that A lot of people put a lot of effort, working, a lot of time. Working for free just yeah. to get this place going. A lot which of time. Was, oh, it was unreal. Yeah. And... So whatever, we opened up in the year 2000. Yep. Skate park, did, like, did it gain pretty quick traction in your opinion? Did it? Oh, yeah, I think it went huge. And then we had some stores in it too. We had built some buildings inside. So we had a bike shop inside, we had a skate shop inside, mm -hmm. and a birthday party room on the inside. Year 2000. Yeah. I'm, I just turned 13 years yeah. old. Um, I'm riding there every single day, yeah. pretty much. Um, uh, I quit racing about six months after that yeah. that was when i stopped racing where i'm like oh, <laughs> i don't want to race anymore there's no reason for this yeah and then i had stopped being tra track director yeah same year yeah so same year so you did i was also state commissioner for oh, new yeah. jersey yeah that's right that's true i totally new forgot. jersey bmx yeah so i pretty much made you quit that all that stuff you didn't make me quit <laughs> yeah i know but like yeah. I, you know i wasn't going there anymore right. so um so all our energy kind of went into yeah. riding bmx yeah. then i guess it was, for the first year you know i kind of just was having fun and then when i probably the next year was when i started competing right when yeah. we would start going to some of the events yeah we would start going to roots well the roots jam was in 2002 the first one i did as an amateur when i was 15. right so i did 15 and under 2002 but like i we started doing some events before that like we did the um B, triple B, I think it was called. We went up to Niagara, Niagara. area. Like, I don't even know. Where, it was the... B, B, B's? Triple yeah, B's triple, or B, yeah, B, B's? It, it was at Triple right. B. That was the name of the place. Oh, at the skate Yeah, it was skate Board, park. Bikes, and Blade, yeah. I believe, was the name of the place. So I ended up competing there, won that event. That was pretty cool. <laughs> so we had never been in Niagara Falls. It was the first time. We had a good time there. But anyway, they had this giant... Uh, the setup in this park was ridiculous. They had this giant vert wall went straight up. Like a, wall, a, wall, a quarter pipe wall ride. Yeah, so it, like it was huge. Wall ride. How tall was it, do you think? It was at least a six foot quarter pipe to yeah. a nine or ten foot wall. It was big. It was big. It was really big. And, and it was had a little long. deck on top. Had a little deck on yeah. top. And uh, Scotty says, watch. <laughs> he jumps up this quarter and lands on top. What would you have? I rode across it. the top of it. it. Yeah, yeah, I mangled across. it. Man, I remember he did that, and all the pros that were there, like, holy God, what the hell? Yeah, that you know? was nuts. Where the hell did this kid come from? Because I remember I rode against Matt Sparks, who was a nut. Yeah. Dude, he did. He invented so many tricks in BMX yeah. over the years, but I had no idea who he was at the time. That's right. We competed against amateur, each other, yeah. and he was so good. He was doing flares and stuff, yep. doing tail whoops. I wasn't even tail whooping, really, at the time. I was, uh, my big trick over the box of the back loop, and then I was like, I gotta do something big. So I did it, Superman's Secret, and I was like, Buh! I never did that in my life, and I went, Whoa! pushed it so but i i think what my dad wants to say is um alistair witten ended up winning the event and alistair witten did my manual in his run oh, right wow. yeah that's crazy which was wild yeah like, it was it was nuts so like that was amazing yeah. to see we went to the law revolution contest or i believe it was the one at the binghamton new binghamton, york skate park yeah, that that's crazy what, yeah. east coast terminal skate park yeah yeah yeah, place yeah. Was there, lee lynn was out there cooking on the grill <laughs> <Lee> with, uh, <laughs> yeah naked again with his uh, yeah. apron on apron. yeah and then like because crandall was that was yeah. his spot up there yeah, sure. we, were, we were hanging out uh it yeah. was just cool seeing all those pros place. hanging yeah. around it was definitely a lot different than the yeah club. it was definitely cool a lot different than the yeah. club <laughs> completely <laughs> different yeah. um but yeah we started doing the amateur circuit and he brought me to all those events i ended up getting sponsored by ugp at the ugp event yeah. as an amateur which i was so proud of then um Easter. we went we went to my first pro contest, which I didn't want to enter pro contest at all. I was Canada. trying to do amateur still. Yeah, Toronto. And we were going to go to the Metro Jam that was yep. in Toronto. And you were the one who pretty much was like, I yeah. should enter professional. Yeah. So what made well, you? Well, I'll tell you right now, yeah. because you had came to me and we were doing these amateur contests and you were doing great. We were shocked because you were winning them all. And then I remember you came to me one day, uh, you know, a young, young kid, dad. I heard one of the parents call me a sandbagger. Mm. They're saying that I'm a sandbagger, that I'm going to all these contests, winning them, and I should be pro. And you were what, like? 15. 15 at the time. I was like, man, 
there, and there's no such thing as a 15 year old pro, as far as I knew. Anyway. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember you were really upset about that, man. Really upset about that. You didn't like that at all. So. Uh, but I didn't see myself as a pro. You didn't at see all. yourself as a pro, like, and no, you weren't really wanted. You didn't want to be a pro, but you were kind of in a situation now, where as an amateur, people were talking about you, saying you should be riding pro. But on the other hand, you had only really won a couple of contests, and you probably shouldn't be a pro. Yeah, it was, only, uh, it was only like three you're events. Like yeah. in, you know, that yeah, I yeah. really won. Yeah. And yeah. it's not like I went to like a whole series. Yeah, so that's what I said. I was it. like, you know what? Why don't we go to uh, Metro Jam? I'd never been to Canada. You'd never been. So let's go to Metro Jam and, and let's see if we can enter you as a pro. And I remember we went there. Me and you jumped in the truck and we went to, to Canada. Yeah. We went to Toronto. Pretty cool. Definitely cold. It was the coldest place in the and, world. And uh, it was just me and you. Yeah, we, st we got a hotel. It was, again, it was pretty strange. Uh-huh. And nope. then, so I, I did not want to enter pro. Still, when I was there, I like... I remember when I went to enter you. I went to sign you up. Yeah, Scotty Kramer, 15 years old. Okay, what division? Uh, he's going to enter pro. Huh? Pro? How old is he? 15. Nah, I don't, I don't think you can enter pro. That doesn't really... All the pros, no. So they tried to... Yeah, they were basically saying, nah, you, should, you know, you can't enter pro. He's only 15. I was like, well, is there a rule? No, really, there's no rule. You know what? All right, he wants to enter pro. Let's, let's enter him as pro. So you were apparently the youngest uh, pro that I'd ever entered. Yeah, in those, at least. <coughs> yeah. So, like I said, I didn't want to enter pro. Yeah. I did not, because I saw all those guys as my hero. Oh, my God. They, they, they were, were all there, too. Everybody Jeez. was there. I was just so starstruck. Yeah, it and was then amazing. I had to show up and practice with these guys. Right. Imagine me as scared as possible, having to practice with all the guys I look up to. I right. did not want to get in front of them at all. So I barely practiced. I just did I just did a couple hits. I'm like, man, I got to do, I want to do a flip up on something. I got to like really, if I'm going to try to enter, so I really got to bring the flip up out. And I did a flip up over the hip, yeah, the spine to the hip, oh, did that. It worked. I never did a hip flip up in my the life. The wall ride the tail whip was the big trick. That was the big At one. At the time and at that contest, yes. that was, that that was, was the big one. That day changed my life. Like 100%, that day changed my life. It was weird because we were sitting there. I remember when you did qualifying. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had got panini sandwiches. We had never, ever heard of a panini sandwich, but we had got panini sandwiches. And we we're sitting there waiting as they're calling off the, the uh, finals, who's going to be in the finals. And we're going down a list, down a list, and they're calling off all the names. And they're getting down into, like, the top five. And I was like, you know what? It was Yeah, because cool, I rode pretty good in qualifying. Oh, I thought like, you did great. I, I, I landed everything. Yeah. Like, I did, I did what I, I, thought you did great. What I, what I yeah. could do, pretty much. And they're, they're, you know, me and you were sitting against the wall there doing our thing. We didn't really know anybody there, so it was kind of just me and yeah, you. Yeah, we were just by ourselves. Yeah. So, uh, and they're calling today. He's like, hey, man, it's cool. You know, so what? You, you didn't make finals? We had a great time. This was a great experience. Number one qualifier, Scotty Kramer. <laughs> Holy cow. Are you kidding me? I remember, Number your, one pro I remember qualifier. his reaction more than anything. Yeah. Like, cool. I was like, it hit me like, like a dream. I was like, how the hell? Yeah. Like, I, and then he, he was oh, like, what? oh, yeah. like he was so. That was crazy. <laughs> He was like calling. Wait a minute. My All mom, the pros like, are here. You're not gonna believe this. Like, yeah. He's like calling, her. and then it was like, oh yeah, you have to go ride again, like type yeah. of deal. It, it was like, finals. it didn't even matter at that uh, point yeah. what I like. You, you're right. I, like I didn't care about yeah. riding finals. Like I was excited to get an opportunity to ride, but I was like in such shock. I'm like, it didn't even matter. Yep. Didn't even matter. Didn't even have to show up as long as my name I think was on there. Everybody was in shock. Yeah, I remember everyone that I looked up forward, like right. up to, coming up to me, like Edwin De La Rosa coming yeah. up to wow. me, talking to me. It was the cool. craziest yeah, was thing awesome. ever. Insane. Like Ruben coming up and talk to me. Like everybody, like they, like it was so weird because like they went out of their way to come talk to me and yeah. tell me like, dude you're awesome i was like what the hell is wow. happening like it was the it was the weirdest experience and then he ever. had to practice he's out there practicing with just the finalists what was mm -hmm. there 10 maybe 10 yeah, or 12 maybe finals 12. maybe so it was good because one thing about scotty is that he hated to practice when there's too many people mm -hmm. on the course so anyway he's practicing and he uh blows his tire and we didn't have well, two that was no that so the practice was or, it the first run of final or was run. it practice yeah, yeah so my first run pops his tire well you had a slow leak in the tire i did you're right 100%. you had a slow leak in the tire he um he only gets to do what did you have like a minute run or something yeah, it was a, like a jam you out there you did your minute you come back in you got a flat tire so now we're running to a pump to pump his tire back up for the next run 
So you'd run back out there, you'd do as much as you can, come back in with a flat tire. Yeah. And we just kept doing that the whole time because we didn't have anything to change. We didn't have a... Uh, which, we which I look back at and I'm like, I feel almost like it's like a blessing because yeah. like the pressure was off at that point yeah, for me. Right. Like I was like, I went from being like, oh my God, to being like, I'm here I am like riding yeah. with everybody and then I have a flat, so I'm just battling yeah. the flat oh, tire. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so, I, which I thought was a blessing. I ended up getting ninth, ninth place, you ninth know, but like I, I never even got us run through it because yeah. like I, yeah. my tire just kept it right. all flat. But like, it completely changed my life. Remember Alan Foster coming up yeah, to us straight sure. away. Yeah. So Alan Foster, legendary BMX racer, right. Brian Foster, their brothers, and he came up to my dad straight away, started talking to us. He's like, I'm Alan Foster. Like, I know exactly who you are. He's like, I work for Felt Bicycles. Yep. He's like, team manager we would love Felt. to put him yeah. on the team. So he went there on a recon mission. Yeah. Uh, you Like, hey, go out there and try to find somebody right. we can put in the team. And, and yeah, he made his mind immediately on that. Yeah. So cool. And then, um, we we left uh, that event and then uh, s straight away we were getting called by Vans. Yeah, their Vans is calling calling up and they're like, they're like, hey, I'm Jerry Barris from Vans. Yeah. We'll put him on the team. But I know Jerry Barris. We, we, that's the guy that sure. Chris Chris Schoner used that's to right. hate. We, yeah, we hated Grams. him. Yeah, Chris Schoner, my dad mentioned at yeah. the beginning. <laughs> Doug Schoner was track director. Yeah. My Chris Schoner was a son. Well, they, I don't know that they hated him. They but, were they no. Were, Chris Schoner hated Jerry yeah, Barris because we went to the yeah. Grands with Chris yeah. Schoner. Yes. He got taken out in yes, the grands yeah. by yes, Jerry Batter. So he goes, I hate the bad boy. Yeah. Bad boy Batters is the worst. So in my head, I'm like, that's the worst rider ever. I was like, I hate that guy. <laughs> yeah. So he called my dad up. This is Jerry Batters from Vans. I'm like, get him off the phone. I'm like, this is, ain't happening. I'm not going to Vans. And then we started talking. And then like it went from, oh, <laughs> you know, like, I, I was sponsored by Eastern Bikes. Yeah, Before that, the they were just sure. giving me a bike. That was amazing. Sure, sure. And then it's like, oh, we want to pay him yeah. to be on the team. So it went from... I, I, it was my job straight right. away. It turned immediately into this being my job. And yeah. here's my dad like negotiating. Uh, I'm like, oh yeah, sure. The, well, this t company wants to give him this much a month. Yeah. It was ridiculous. So yeah. let me bring up this one thing, okay? okay. I got to bring this up because I, I, I think people will find this very interesting. Okay. Seventh grade was a rough year for me. Uh -huh. Okay. It was a real rough year for me. Yeah. I was school. doing terrible in school. Absolutely terrible in school. Uh, I only just, one year? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> this one in particular. Fifth grade was when it went, started going downhill. Seventh grade, I just couldn't focus. I was just, I would just sit there and just think about riding my bike all day. I was building, drawing ramps is all I would do. Finger I bike. tried, I tried. I just had zero interest in what was being taught. I was failing. I wasn't doing good at all. So they called in and they had a meeting. They had my dad come in for this meeting. All right, this is seventh grade. Uh, they sit they sit you down. They're like, Mr. Kramer, your son's failing. Your son's, he's barely getting by right now. Um, you know, like, there's, we got to make a change. Something needs to happen. You ended up telling these teachers something. Yeah, but I, I don't think it was as bad as what you were, the way you. I, it might not have been, but. Yeah. Listen, it wasn't in that same context. I did say it. <laughs> but it, it wasn't in that context. It might have had something to do with you going to college. If you don't straighten up now. You're never going to get accepted into a college. I says, well, he's probably never going to college anyway. He's going to be a pro BMX rider. <laughs> yeah. So that was that. So it did happen, well, though. It did happen that oh, way. Oh, yeah. I remember saying it. Whether the context I just not. didn't say, yeah, I don't care about your school. Yeah, I know. Work. I'm not saying that. Yeah. I'm not saying you didn't be like, it doesn't matter. Right. He's going to be, you saw something right. in me. Like, oh, what yeah, was it that you knew that, like, all right, this guy's I, probably going to be. Yeah. I mean, you're, you were just so determined, you know. You set your mind at something, and mm -hmm. that was it. And I have plenty of examples for that. Yeah. That we'll get into later, I yeah. guess. But, man, you, um, you get it in your head, and that's it. It stays in your head until you get it out. Uh huh. And that was in your head. You wanted to be a pro. Wow. And then, yeah, he told, he told them, like, you know, the truth. And that, that yeah. was the truth. It's not like it was fab fabricated at all. Like, and BMX no. at the time was huge. It was huge. Oh, yeah. Humongous. Yeah. The amount of people that were coming to the skate yeah. park all the time. It was insane. Plus all the contests that were going. Exactly. So many competitions. Yeah. And it was epic. So uh, n not even a month after Toronto, I don't even know when the Roots Jam was in 2003. But I went to that event. Just like we did last year, I competed 15 and under, won that one. I turned up 16 yeah. pro. This I didn't even go to 16 right. and over. I just went straight to pro. So now I'm riding this event. You're watching me. I end up qualifying super high again. Right. We're going into the finals. I'm telling you all my game plans of what to do. Yeah, flip whip over the rail. Uh huh. Yeah. I go out there post. and I do the flip whip and over the hitching it. post. Yeah. And uh, I end up winning my first pro yep. event. Um, what was going through your mind at that point? I was the same. I, I, I mean, I knew. I, 
I mean, I can't say I knew, but I had a great idea that you were going to kill it. Mm -hmm. yeah, so then after done. that, it was official. Like, uh, that's when I signed the contracts. Yeah. And then later that year, I went to my first X Games. Like, what, yeah. from your perspective, you know, you knew how big X Games was at the time. Oh, yeah. You know what huge. I mean? Like, you yeah. knew. And then we showed up there. Yeah. It was insane. All we're staying at Hotel Figueroa, downtown Hotel Figueroa, Los down, Angeles. Yeah, sure. Um, and then I didn't have the best rookie experience no. there. Broke your nose. Broke almost. my nose. I definitely broke it. There's no, it's no. crooked as could be. It's crooked. Yeah. There, it it hasn't been headache. straight since. My eyes were yeah. black and blue. Yeah, he had a bad time. I got that was 19, in practice. 19th out of 20th on the, yeah. uh, the event of the that day. That wasn't a good one. It wasn't good at all. Um, but it was a great experience. It, oh, it was amazing. Unbelievable. Yeah. I got to go to an X Games, which was crazy. All I went from being, I, I went as a spectator in 2002 in Philadelphia yeah. to going riding, and I had no idea that was going to happen. Didn't see that. There was not even a, a, right. a glimpse of that in the future, and, I, and that happened. So that's pretty insane. Yeah. So we went and experienced that. It was a wild time. I, I couldn't even imagine. Like for experience. me, yes, I was a kid. But you were an adult. You yeah. got to understand everything at that point. Like yeah. you were literally, I'm just kind of flying, you know. Hey, okay, we well, all oh, were, here, really. We're we had all never. But you were old, mature enough to yeah, like be like, wow, this is yeah. insane. Oh, yeah. God. You it know? Was, it was an amazing so, experience. So like from then on, you know, it just kind of snowballed into what yeah. it was. You know, like a... I didn't even get I didn't get my first medal until 2005 right because I broke my leg in 2004 so right. I missed that uh, X Games where I got second place behind Dave Muir on the right. gold bike right uh -huh. you know that was pretty insane so like yes I mean I don't want to detail my yeah, we full had the career tours going we had the but, like, X yeah, Games just going think about that 2005 yeah. was do tour like yeah. that was nuts like you were Amazing. going to all those oh, yeah. events having the best time ever Maddie was coming to those events Kelsey was going to those events like yeah. it was it was pretty epic we're going to a lot of stuff, that's yeah, yeah you got to experience a lot, a lot of, of as cool a kid of just like yeah, showing up and just having a blast yeah. world, you know? like that had to have been stuff. really cool a, lot, a whole lot of free stuff a lot of Mountain Dew yeah <laughs> I remember we you, and we all had passes <laughs> to go into the athlete lounge oh, to, yeah, uh, to yeah. eat all yeah. the time. Yeah. yeah, I remember uh, me and Scotty were going in there, and Sean White come walking in, you know, with a whole bunch like an entourage yeah. almost. And I was like, "Come on, let's go! Up there. Come on, let's go, Dad! We're out! Yeah. Let's go!" <laughs> yeah, he yeah, wouldn't. You loved that. He oh, was yeah. like the ultimate. He wouldn't let me go even in though there. he was like a competitor's dad, he was like the tourist dad. He was like, "Oh, I had a whoa!" Great time. Yeah. <laughs> I sat in the stands at a do tour one time uh, in front of Travis Pastrana. And uh, his wife, or no, the skateboard else? guy, the which one, the big time skateboard kid like, at the time, like yeah, yeah, Ryan Sheckler. Okay. Ryan yeah, Sheckler, yeah. I'm sorry, I don't remember his name, Ryan Sheckler and Travis Pastrana were sitting there watching BMX practice. Yeah, I'm sitting right in front of us, says, Listen, you know, we're talking a little bit, you gotta do me a favor. My daughter, <laughs> she would just, <laughs> she's not here, but yeah. she would freak out, man. Yeah. It's her birthday. And if you wouldn't mind, can I call her? Oh, yeah, call her, Mr. Screamer, no problem. What's her name, Kelsey? Oh, my God. <laughs> I called her. Hey, Kelsey, hold on. And I gave Ryan Sheckler the phone. And he's like, hey, Kelsey, happy birthday. This is uh, Ryan. And she's like, you know, I can. I didn't know at the time but because he had the phone. But she, uh, she, didn't, she was speechless. Didn't even know what to say. <laughs> the funniest thing oh, my God. He was great. They were both great. Yeah. Even Travis. Hey, Kelsey, happy birthday. This is Travis from mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody was so So you good. had a cool oh, experience. Like, it was... It, it was a lot different. They than, were all the best. Than you thought it was going to yeah. be, like you know. Yeah. I, I'm assuming over the years, right? I never got to meet Sean we White. We Travis Strong a bunch of times. I remember. Yeah, it's, oh, oh, he's, he's a great guy. Yeah, great he's guy. He's always super cool. Yeah. Up on a dirt bike yeah. When he's in the pits. We walking, yeah. And then he, I remember like that's yep. the first time I seen him in person. Yeah. Because you were the tallest human I've ever. Yeah. Seen in my life. <laughs> he's a big guy for a dirt bike. I yeah. know. And then on a dirt bike, the dude looked like he must have been seven, eight feet tall. And I just remember sitting there. I was like, oh my god. It's amazing. So, like, as as a kid, you go into the events, Matt. Like, what, what do you just remember? Like, just, did, did it feel normal to you yeah. because you were around it? So normal. Okay. Yeah, it felt like that was the nor that was what every kid has to do. Gotcha. It just felt like part of it. Mm -hmm. There's definitely a lot of stuff that I missed for a, a while. Like some of the events we went to, that I have no idea. I don't remember being there at all. Uh -huh. But then there was just later on, like these little key moments of being in all these different places. Like, I can random randomly remember like walking on a certain street in Salt Lake City. Mm. And then I can remember like meeting a certain person yeah, in this spot. Fun. And then I can remember like a piece of a course from this place. Mm. You know, like, so definitely a lot of stuff is very yeah. spotty. But yeah, it all felt pretty normal. Then you go home to school, you tell everyone that that's where you were for the yeah. weekend. That's why I wasn't in school for the week, whatever. So we did a lot mm. of traveling. Amazing. So let's, uh, let's fast forward then. 2007 comes around, okay? Yeah. Uh, you get a phone call from somebody that owns a bike shop, the property of a bike shop. Well, 
right? It wasn't quite that much. Okay. But yeah, it was. What happened then? So the. Um, because you weren't the track director again, or no, were you? No, I wasn't the track director at the time. But what had happened was um, I was still in contact with the people that owned the bike shop. And the bike shop had been sold to a company called um, Beacon. Well, that was 98, They bought the business. Right? Yeah, 98, they bought it. Yeah, them. they bought the business, and then they leased the building where the track was from Carol and Bob, great people. And, uh, yeah, I was still hanging out a little bit, and they said, oh, yeah, well, Beacon's not renewing their lease. They're moving out of here. They were there. Uh, it was, I guess it was a 10-year lease or something. But it was in 2007. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Says, yeah, Beacon's moving out of here. Well, we don't know what we're going to do. I was like, oh, really? Hmm. Wow. Because then she shop, said huh? she was going to, like, she's like, the track could close down. Because yeah, if a yeah, furniture sure. place yeah. took sure, it. Sure, everything. Yeah, so I uh, I talked to your mother. We got a skate park. Why not open up a bike shop? So we opened up the bike shop not knowing anything about it back in 2007. So we teamed up. My dad was like, hey, you know, we can open up the bike shop because I was accumulating money at this point from being uh, a yeah. sponsored rider. So we, we went halves on it, right. you know, uh, and that's when we opened up the bike shop. Right. Um, and man, like that was insane because that bike shop was where I got my first BMX bike from, uh, you know, in 1995. Right. Then... Um, in 97 when Beacon, because I used to go there every day with him when he would talk to Carol about the track. Yeah. He would be talking to her about the track. I'd be hanging around. He'd be hanging around. So I was friends with everybody that worked there. And, and in 97, I just showed up there, went behind the desk like I always do, go talk to the guys. Yeah. And some dude's like, hey, get out of here. Yeah, and he Beacon, kicked me out. They some nice dude. People. I'm like, oh, what the heck is yeah. happening? And then he told me, he's like, hey, Beacon owns it now. It's not Bicycle World. I never went back in there. Yeah. That was it. I, I never went back in yeah, there again. Yeah, they weren't very friendly but, You people. know, but like... It, they were it, it all was business. Just, yeah, it was just business. All business. Yeah, it, yeah. it was just a different thing. It, a completely different. Yeah. So I never went back in that bike shop again. But I love that bike shop. Yeah. So I was super excited about this. So we took it over. Um, and we here we are, you know, 2023, 16 years later now, yeah. right? And still we're, going, we're still, sure. still running the bike shop, which is insane. So dang cool. um, but I guess one thing I think we should talk about, because I think about it now, like just watching Maddie ride. Like this has to be the most stressful thing ever, being a parent and watching your kids riding freestyle BMX. Yes. Like I must have... The amount of injuries that I've had, yeah. you know, Maddie's had injuries. I mean, I've had a lot worse of injuries. How, like, how did you mentally handle this, honestly? Yeah, that's that's a good question. That's, I mean, I don't know. I guess we got used to it. Is I, that really how it is? Do you really get used to yeah, it? I, you know, I, what was I going to do? I can't pull you out of something that you're, like, for one, you making a thought, living at. Yeah, but have you ever thought, even before that, of like, oh, yeah, he can, he's not going to do this. This is too dangerous for him. No. But like, because no. I broke my leg yeah. when I was 13, nothing too serious. Right. Um, I knocked my teeth out when we went to Woodward in 2001. Remember that? Yeah. Like, um, I had a couple of head injuries here and there. Yeah. That was it. But like, for but you. But again, there's no way I could stop you from yeah. doing it. You would have never, I would have been the, the bad father of yeah. the year at that point. The, so you kind of realized that, like, this is just part I of... I mean, I wasn't for it, of course. Yeah. I, you know, I, I know you're not... I like, get hurt. You weren't like, hey, I think we don't could do ever... that trip no. over that. You never did that. No, I did this all. I... I was the one who came up with the no, ideas. Yeah. He never pushed Although it. I did do that when you tried that double backflip. You don't told, do You it. told me not to do yeah, it. Of course yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. But I still went and sent it. That was dumb. Yeah, it was the dumbest move I've ever you made on my bike. The that or the... the no. No. I don't think so. Okay, so back to... But we did safety. Safety was huge. Mm -hmm. You know, we had to make sure you had the best safety okay. equipment. If you're going to do it, you're probably going to get hurt. I don't want to say that it happens to everybody, but it's, let's make sure that it's... You're going to crash. Let's There's make no sure it's around. manageable, mm -hmm. you know? Let's, so I guess we'll just fast forward to the worst part of it, you know? like uh, The only thing I want to say to what? that, too, is that I have... Uh, I was on a first aid squad for many years, okay. and I had some experience with it, too. All right. You know? So do you think that made it a little more... No, it more... didn't make it okay. It Not just okay, made it a little but, easier. But like you, you're, a little bit, you're a little yeah. bit more used to it, yeah, yeah. in a way. I guess so. Okay, so that... And I kind of knew what sense. to do when... Uh, when you did get hurt. But then you're used to seeing stuff, though. You're used to seeing well, it. But it can't, it's, it's different when it's your kid, I though. know that, yeah. 100%. So that's why like, I'm trying to realize like how... Yeah. I know it, it has to be terrible. So like, we'll just get it out of the way. Let's yeah. just go straight into it. Let's pull the Band-Aid off quick. 2016, you get the worst phone call ever. Yeah. All right? The worst phone call ever. Yeah. I know you, it's not even easy to talk about. Yeah. But at least at here we are. You know, like we're, yeah, we're, we're okay. So you got the worst phone call ever. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I don't even want to dig in too much, but like, you immediately, you're just like, wow, this is this is the this is everything that we've ever scared, yeah. been scared. Well, of uh, during the phone call, all we knew was that you were hurt. You yeah. were hurt bad. Mm -hmm. but that's all we knew. 
we didn't know anything else. So you didn't even know if I was no. paralyzed at this point? No. Okay. The only thing we knew is that there was probably a head injury and you were hurt pretty bad. Okay. Um, so so you, straight away, get so up and go. So you, you got on a plane, went to Las Vegas. Yeah. Thank, uh, first of all, I just want to say that we made a couple phone calls right away and there was a lot of people that got involved. Yeah, there was Yeah, Trish of people. was amazing. Yeah. Uh, Road to Recovery, amazing. Uh, Connor yeah. Fields. Has oh, Connor. Great. Connor geez. Fields. Uh, Kyle yeah. Carlson. Kyle oh, Carlson. Yeah, Mrs. Carlson. Yep. But I mean, that was after the first phone call. But okay. yeah, the first phone call was, you know, let's go. And then uh, your mother was like, man, I, I don't know if I can take this. You know, I don't know. So mm -hmm. she says, all right, you fly out there with Lisa, your wife. Fly out there. Let's see how bad it is. Let's see, you know, what we're going to do. And God, call me right away, you know, because there was just, you know, Maddie was still back yeah. here. And yep. We, um, yeah, so that was it. Lisa and I got on the first plane we could. Mm -hmm. Got there in the morning. Yeah, it was pretty. So uh, I, like, I know that was like the roughest thing you probably yeah. ever experienced. Yeah, it was bad. Know, uh, but I guess instead of digging in too much, let's, when did you first know that I was going to be okay? What was like the first thing that where you were like, He's, he's, this is going to be okay. Wow. It wasn't for a while, I can tell you that, because uh -huh. it was a bad scene when I got there. Yeah. It was uh, very scary. Uh-huh. You know, we had no idea, and, and we're in there looking at you. You're laying in the bed. You were pretty much out because you were so swollen. Mm -hmm. You were mumbling some stuff, but you were really out of it. Mm -hmm. And then um, the nurse says, oh, can you come out to the desk? The doctor or the surgeon wants to talk to you on the phone. I was like, all right, I'll go. We're on the phone, and Lisa and I are both kind of listening. We had the phone between us, you know, listening to what he's saying. He's like, yeah, well, he's now uh, classified as a quadriplegic. What? No, he's got a head injury. No, he's got a neck injury, too, which we had no idea. Wow. So he's now a quadriplegic. He's paralyzed. Uh, full paralyzed. Oh, my God. Now that we had no idea. That was Jeez, that heavy so like a had, ton of... Oh, you yeah. You didn't even know it. No. Whoa. No. I remember hearing that, my legs just got weak. Well, it's bad. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, like I know it's really hard for you to talk about. It. That's yeah. why, like, I just wanted to, uh, just briefly, because, like, I always try to remind you, and I do this myself too. Where, like, hey. Yeah. We're, we're here. We are right. Everything oh, works yeah. out right. In the end, the, the story has a good ending, but at the time it sucked. Oh, it's bad. So, like, you were there the whole time with me. Oh yeah. From no, I didn't leave. From sure. October twelfth or thirteenth, you know, there could yeah. technically be the next three Vegas. weeks we were there. And we were we were in Las Vegas. Thanks again, to, like you mentioned, to Connor, and his family helped us out. They um they had connections to a, a townhouse or a condo, mm -hmm. uh, pretty close to the hospital, and they uh, they offered it up to us. Wow. So we were able to amazing. stay three weeks. Yeah. Amazing. So, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But so many people helped yeah. us. So we'll just skip past, you know, the, the bad part of the injury. We get to New Jersey. We're at... Um, we had to fly you. West yeah. Orange. Yeah, that was crazy. Fly him in a med jet. Um, I was still out of it. I don't. It, it took me like two days before I started remembering things or started acting normal-ish. Huh. Ish. Yeah. Like, you know, like where I would actually like have my eyes open and talk and stuff like that. Yeah. Like uh, there. But then it was a long time there of doing yeah. more of the same. Three months. When did you, because like mentally I wasn't right. And I remember telling my cousin the story about the MedJet flight where I was on the MedJet. I told him, I was like, they flipped me upside down. I was hanging over. <laughs> my arms were tight. Yeah, it was it miserable. Happen. And I looked at him and I see him look at my cousin and go, and he looks at, at my cousin and goes, that never happened. And I was like, yeah. I, I'm like, it hit me. I was like, uh oh, there's something wrong with me. Like I was convinced of it. I was like, "All right, I'm out of it." So, so I you were way of that, out of it. You all, man, it was a yeah for a while. We had a pretty bad head injury too. Yes. Besides being well, paralyzed, that was the wor that was the original diagnosis. So right? I remember like, even in the hospital in Vegas, um, and you hated this. They would come in with this um, oxygen thing that you had to blow into, and every time they came in, it had this smoke coming out of it, which mm. was a mist. And you swore to God it was a cigarette. Yeah. You said, "No, I'm not smoking a cigarette." And the guy's like, no, I'm a therapist. Listen, this is air coming out. It's going to go into your throat. It's going to help you. And I want to see how much you can blow on it. You know, how high you can raise the ball. <laughs> I'm doing it. And then what we <laughs> we finally figured out was that, listen, let's tell him it's a microphone. If we tell him it's a microphone and he's filming a YouTube video, maybe. So Tammy came in and Scotty, hey, let's um, talk into the microphone here. Tell me a little story about this. And man, you went. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. The story started flowing. So yeah. 
he did an introduction and everything, you know, and he didn't mind it at that point. He's like, hell yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was crazy the way things were. Oh, worked. that had been so scary. I mean, yeah. like, it's. It, I'm so glad that I have my movement back, but, like, the fact yeah. that my brain works. Yeah. You're right. I'd say normally right now. You're right. I don't think there's anything. No. Uh, like, you know, like I said, I caught yeah. you behind my back telling my cousin that I wasn't right. Right. I don't I don't see you doing that right now no. anymore. I no, haven't seen no. you do that in a while. No. So I'm everything's assuming everything's normal. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Okay. I haven't seen anything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I haven't caught on yet. But, yeah. but like, I think that's the be most important thing, right? Like, where I'm like, of at course. least I'm a normal functioning person right. to talk to. I think that's, I'm more grateful for that than anything. Yeah. So... Let's just uh, flash forward. You know, I think we, we covered a lot. Yeah. Here we are, you know, you have Maddie now riding. Yeah. How do you feel about Maddie riding? I feel, um, I feel pretty good about Maddie riding. And one of the reasons is, is that um, you had it in your head. Like, again, we were in Orlando in the uh, Dew Tour Finals, and you came to me, uh, you had made the finals, and you came to me and says, well, for finals, I need something big. I'm gonna do a double backflip. I said, what? <laughs> yeah, I think I can do it. I said, well, that, that's not good enough. You know, you can't think you can do it. Did you ever do one? No. Why do you think you can do it now? It's a vibe. It's a vibe, Dad. I feel it. It's got a right lip. Everything's right. I think I can do it. Listen, let's do something else. This isn't a good idea. You had it in your head that you were going to do that double backflip, and you did. I had it the didn't win. matter what I yeah, said. Yeah, I had to win. So it didn't matter what. Yeah, as you're exactly right. You had to win. I had to win in my head. Oh, so, but that's the way you are. Uh -huh. Maddie's a little different. Maddie, Maddie loves the competition. We're not having that conversation. <laughs> We're not having a double backflip conversation. Yeah, right. <laughs> Any moment. That's never Maddie, Maddie's not showing up to a contest and saying, "I think I know what to do." No, <laughs> Maddie, um, you had to win. Maddie doesn't have to win. He's he's competitive, but he doesn't have to win. Yeah, he. And that's Matt, not by my choice. That's by his choice. Yeah, Maddie's not like risk his life for, Maddie does um, not race. have the determination that you had he's an awesome rider he has his, a great style he's got his own thing about him which is unbelievable a little different than you you were you were uh, a little crazy <laughs> your tricks were ridiculous you know that that's what made you stand out you know you were the guy to try to anything but, anything but like at the track last night you were like I think Maddie should slow down a little bit <laughs> Was he was fast. <laughs> Man, that, that's scary. <laughs> what I asked you, <laughs> hey, did Maddie ever fall yet? Yeah. Because like, I, haven't, I haven't been around with him racing. It's, I, I don't want to be there that first time. And it's, <laughs> I hate to say it, but it's probably going to happen. <laughs> He's got to. I, I, oh I think Maddie should pad up. Do you think Maddie yeah, should pad up? I think, I think Maddie's got to put the, the crash gear on. I think I think that's a smart Look move. great. Oh, it's just so, so fast. There's so yeah. much speed. Like, when you crash, it's gonna be like. Like you go around that turn right there. You, the sound is. It was amazing. vicious, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you were pretty close to the top. Yeah. <laughs> but it was awesome. But to watch. Like that, the reason why I bring it, that's why I brought it up because yeah. I saw you have a nervous dad thing last night oh, watching Maddie. Very yeah. proud. Very of course, proud. Yeah, of course. But amazing. At the same time, racing. he knows the repercussion. Mean, for, he started out as a racer, went to freestyle. He's doing great as a freestyle, and now he's kind of. You know, adding the racing, the gravel, the mountain, and everything. It's amazing yeah. what he's doing. It's a, lot. Yeah. it's a whole lot going on yeah. at once. All a right. lot of good stuff. So, all right. So, so I guess that answers my question. You know, well, I went myself. to a mountain bike competition with him once. Oh, yeah, you yeah, did. Yeah, that was mountain pretty bike. cool. What did you think about that one? Well, I thought it was cool, except for I had to carry all this stuff up this hill. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> God, I couldn't believe it. I have two golf I had two golf carts. Remember he was trying to I commission said, hey. the young kid? He saw the young kid. Yeah. 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 I'm I'm pay him. I have money out. Come on. Come here. He's like, hey, you think I should tell that kid to go carry I told tent? him, we come back here again, I'm bringing a golf cart. That's it. We're that done. so funny. Pulled the truck up, he's like, I'm going to pull it right back. It was. Like, Dad, you can't do that. It's not. Then, then yeah. you know, I was like, Damn. he's like, no, you, Matt, you don't have to carry anything. Go, You go practice or whatever. A minute later, I'm. I, it was I, so I'm hot. Pedaling my bike with it. Oh, uh, I brought everything. I brought battery operated fans. Yeah. By the time uh, I finished, there was like a whole display oh, yeah. of, of. Oh, yeah. Everything. But it was, what, three and a half hours? It was. It was a lot. It was ridiculous. I don't even know how you did it. Yeah, yeah, just think about he rode full. Yeah, oh yeah, no. Which is nice. And me and um, Bree, yeah, were there, and we sat for three and a half hours while we just filled your water bottle and kept putting it out. But man, that was it was hot. <laughs> it was really hot. I had a uh, battery operated fan yeah. going. You know, yeah. and even some of the people that were there, I was like, yeah, "Come on, yeah, come sit in the tent. Yeah, the tent. yeah, come in the tent. So it's funny. cool." But I guess I guess we'll transition this into my outro because it just goes to show you were 
you always will yes. be the most supportive dad. Mm -hmm. You are always going to be there for us, no matter what. Yes. And I just want you to know, because me and Maddie have talked about it before, we wish there's a way that we could thank you more. Yeah, like we w but that's the thing. We, we wish that we could, like, I, I, I just wish that this YouTube channel would take off and we could just get you the sickest RV. Yeah. And I wish that we can go on but tour have and we can hire I you. I have it. And we can hire you to be our tour, tour driver yeah. and bring us all to skate parks. Yeah. That would be my dream. Like, I well, wish that that would happen. It city. may happen. I might but, retire soon and we can do it anyway. You know, yeah. so like, but, segue would yeah, be yeah, cool. Segue would be Man, segue, that would be cool. Yeah. He's the one to segue like forever. The we used to rent the Segway on the, yeah. the beach, the boardwalk. He loves the Segway. That was a lot of fun. I tried to buy him a Segway. He used when yeah. they are so expensive, yeah. man. Like, I couldn't justify it. Still. Yeah, so eventually, better off. we're going to get a segue. Yeah, eventually, we're going to do it. I think after people watch this Listen, video, I'm we're going to sitting get in Florida right now. Perfect. You are sitting in Florida. Yeah. I can't wait for you to permanently sit in Florida. You see me dripping Not sweat worried. here, too, yeah, right? Yeah, of course. But wow. you're going to get acclimated. Yeah. But I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything you have mm. ever done for us. Huh. All of that, man. You've supported us from the beginning. You will always support us till the end. And we are just so lucky to have you. We okay. really are. All right? All right. So. Thank you. You know, I just, I, I really can't say it enough. And, Don't um, stop here. And I just, I just hope that, you know, we could just keep this going for a while and just keep on enjoying it. And I, yeah. I can't wait for you to retire. And then yeah. hopefully we can have some fun. Exactly. We're going to go on the epic Segway journey. Yeah. We're going to have fun before I retire. Segway across America. <laughs> yeah. So, but guys, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this interview. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I, I hope this this kind of puts it out in perspective of how amazing parents are. Because like you can look at your life and see what your parents have done for you at the same time. You know, we've had a very unique path, um, a lot different than most. But man, everybody out there, just appreciate what you have, uh, how lucky you are to have the family that you do. And um, and yeah, I'm just uh, looking forward to see what the future has entailed for us. So uh, yeah, this is probably the best interview we have ever done and ever will do. And um, I'm very grateful we were able to do it with our dad down That's here right. in Florida. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go have some more fun, but I'm glad we squeezed this in. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. <laughs>